welcome everybody for this another tutorial for from the Aspire Software Limited. Now today we want to focus on uh, on uh, the back office and the major layers. Just like as we said, the interfaces will always be this look like this. And as you can see, last time we saw the front office, and I showed you the front office will always look like this as a shortcut in your desktop. So this is now the shortcut of the back office whereby when you come here just at the shortcut here you just click it. Once you click it what happens is that it will open as you can see it is connecting to the server and uh, once it is connected it will open and it will be like that and as usual those who've been assigned they will input their passwords your name and then you put your password and then once you put your password so that is how it will open let me just enlarge it a little bit so you can see this is now the interface of the entire back office and the back office as you can see it has modules here and every module when you click it it has a sub module in it like you see now this is the point of sale so these are the mechanisms of the point of sale so when you click it you see the sub modules that the customers for wholesalers they will need actually to to register their customers or open the customer accounts especially those who come to buy on credit and all that you'll actually need to 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 track them and this is where you input all your customers it's called the customer manager so when you want to put a new customer you just click new and then you input a customer name mostly you just if the name the customer's name begins with E. Let's say it's Evans. So I'll put E there. So once I put an E there, automatically the system assigns a code, customer code within the, the system. So then down here, I will write now the full full names of, of the customer. Like let's say Evans Kamau Aweru. So once I do that, then I do I do an update. So this is the customer here that we've just created right now. So I can input his address. So if you input the address here, you can say PO box. You can put the PO box there. You can put the numbers. If it is 07, those are the telephone numbers. You can put telephone number 2 if it is 02, blah, blah, blah. And then if the, the mobile phone... You can input if it is if it is plus two five four or seven blah blah blah. Okay, seven blah blah blah. Or you can put the fax number, but hardly people use fax numbers nowadays. Mostly it's email addresses. You can put the email addresses, like for example, no email at none.com. If something like that, I'm not saying these are real email, but you can just put an email. Here, just real emails, and then you can select towns, if it is Eldoret or Bungoma, and then VAT registrations or PIN number registrations for, for these customers and all that. And then what you do, you update. Then we have also the credit settings. You can put credit limits for these customers. You can say he cannot take goods, maybe not more than a million. That is his limit. limit. Okay, that is his limit. And then credit period limit, you can say maybe if it is 12, 12 months or 12 days it is in terms of days so you can say maybe 300 and 365 that is one day so create limit in terms of days so that is it and then here after you've set that then you come and update you can even disable for CAP and invoice sales so when you put the tick here you disable these customers who come to buy for credit and if you you, you remove a tick here if you remove this tick, then you are you will be able actually to enable that. So we have also miscellaneous like the security pins and analysis codes which are actually assigned to these customers. And of course, there are some insurance policies. Like for example, if a customer orders items from you, there are some of the insurance insurance uh, policies or insurance sum that maybe he may pay. This one mostly it is for those customers who are importing goods from maybe outside the country just to ensure that their commodities or products are insured so that in case of anything they are actually covered and also for you the owner of the business 
So yeah, you, you, when, when such a like things, you, you, you need to input that so that uh, you don't incur necessary costs yeah, of uh, issuing or maybe compensating certain things and all that stuff. So these are some of the things that uh, people indicate there. So that is how you track or you input your customers in the, in the back office. And then, of course, we have the CAP. CAP master, this is just a mastery that you are able to track and be able to know which customer has your, your outstandings. Eh? So let's say like if it is Gabriel here, well, let me put my name there. So if it is my name there, you can see this is in the CAP. So this is my statement. This is what actually I did some deposits at the point of sale in the last uh, uh, in the last tutorials, you, 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 the last you can refer to the POS tutorial that I did. I did how to do an, an uh, a deposit in the CAP on the point of sale. So this is what I did. <coughs> this is what I did exactly. And uh, you can see even here my CAP's transactions. These are some of the monies that were taken out. And these are some of the monies that were received or the customer deposited. Okay, and then this is actually the deposits. You can see this is what was deposited. So this is the total amount that the, this customer has in his, in his account. So you are able to track and know exactly which customer has what kind of amount in his, he's deposited his money in your shop. So these are just some of the summaries. You can see those are different outstanding summaries. We have summary A, we have summary B, we have summary C and all kinds of distraction, all kind of transactions and deposits. If you want to see deposits also, and then we have customer statements. And of course, opening balances and the paper clip capability. So I've just clicked on this summary A. It's trying to look for a printer. That's why it's rotating like this. I think it may take some time, but uh, since I've just clicked, we may actually be patient a little bit to see since I don't have a printer here, it may take for some time a little bit for it to open. And this, these summaries are just out, outstanding summaries, eh? so that you can be able to know in a detailed form which customer has your money or which customer has more debt that when they come, they no longer need to be given another, another debt. So that is what it is. So I will, okay, so this is the summary that's opened. So it was looking for a printer. You can see how this is how the document will look like. So this is how like customer Wambua. Wambua has nothing. Her net and outstanding is 2000. So this is percentage of 4.69%. And then we have also Gabriel here. It has gone over 30 days. Okay, so you can see the current one, the current one, because this one I did it just recently. So if it is over seven days, you are able to see. But now this one, it is over. Over, 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 over 30 days. So these ones who've stayed over 30 days or 14 days, these are the ones that the system is indicating that you need to make sure you follow up on them. They are actually passing a red, a red zone lines, okay? So you can check even the total outstanding they have and then with the percentages and all that stuff. So of course, that is how the summaries will, will look like. And then there is here a place you can put a quotation. So, so this is where you will do a quotation. So if it is a client, you say maybe my client is Gabriel and then client's address you can input there. If it is P.O. Box, eh? P.O. Box Ingo, let's say something like that comments, uh, you can say maybe, uh, okay, or maybe I can say because it's not an order as such, but it's just a quotation. So there you can input now products and say this is what he's, he wants. Okay. Then you say he's asking for maybe 10 pieces. You say okay. Now here, if you, you've not mastered the quotes, if you've not mastered the codes, you can as well search them. Eh? You search by pressing F1. Okay, and then you will search it here. Let's say if it is suitcase. So here. 
have not actually written well. So there you can select an item that you wanted to, to make an order of, like let's say if it is 10 pieces, and then you enter that. So that is how an order, once you are done with the order, you simply do that and of course it will print. If you have a printer connection, it will look for a printer and, it, and then it will print. So this is how your order will look like. This is how your order will look like. You've raised an order and if you, lay, you check down here, you see even the system captures whoever has prepared the order. So you can see down here, order prepared by who? The admin. Okay, so that is why we advise that every staff has to use his own password for proper records and proper follow-ups of, of things. Okay, so that is just a, a quotation that you can write a quotation, not actually an order as such, but a quotation. And like uh, I said in the last tutorial, in a wholesale setup, you'll find there are some sales who are taking orders from the customers when they come to your wholesale. So this is where they take orders from the customers. Actually, it will look for a printer since I've not set it on a printer. So it will give me some... Okay, so this is where it... This is where you, you they take orders from, from the customer. So the customer comes and he says, I need 50 kgs of A, B, C, D and all that stuff. So here they will write a customer's name. Say Gabriel here. So if it is a salesman, of course salesman here, I will say even it is myself. So this is Gabriel Aura is the salesman. And then you can realize that it is picking all these details. It is picking them from, from, the, from the HR module. So if it is the same company using the same system, you find that all the details that are in the HR, okay, they are picked from there and then they can actually appear anywhere. So these are modules that work in harmony. So you are able to know because the, we realize that issues of having pictures is very important because in a company you can have people or staff that have the same names. So you may not know who which Gabriel was this. Like now here I've said the customer name is Gabriel. So you may not know which Gabriel is this in our company. But now times when you look at their faces, you are able to recall and say, ah, okay, okay, I know that guy, you see. So that is, that is how it's very important. And then here you can input those codes, the things that you want the customer is telling you i need uh, this and this how many pieces you say two pieces okay and then you say okay Tated you're attempting to sell okay this is what uh, i'm selling this at the cost price so unless you have a right you can input a password here so that the system may allow you but if you don't have a right you may inquire from your leaders or maybe whoever was doing a grn or was receiving these items he actually put wrong prices whoever is dealing with the pricing put wrong prices so here they can go in the system and change or if you have a right you can change it from here let me put 500 now and then you will see if it will accept detected you are attempting to sell a quantity more than a ratio per customer request so this this item also was rationed so i will just put a password here because i have a I have the rights so I will put a password there and say okay now it has accepted me and then I'll put I'll indicate another item here so let's say I'm putting this I want to buy that I will say 10 pieces okay 10 pieces and then indicate everything is is okay so it has accepted but now this uh, it has accepted then I will say save okay so that is that is a that is a sales order that you uh, a customer has raised with one of your customer sales representative in the wholesale so out of this sales order normally it prints once you've raised it and you've connected the printer it will print and once it will print normally it will print in those small printers they are called thermal printers it will print that small uh, in a small uh, order and then from there that small order it has its it has a barcode scan eh? it has a barcode scan where by now the the customer will be given that and goes to the cashier then the cashier will take that and and scan it and then tell the customer the amount she or he supposed he's supposed to pay so that one it's it's very neat it reduces even pilferage and also it helps you actually track your records very well 
So you may also be able to view this. Here you just click here view and then you are able to view this kind of order that was raised by 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 by, by yourselves yourselves like now that one I've clicked view so we can view it. So this is how it looks like. It gives you the order, salesman name, and then the customer's name, and then of course the date and even time, and then also description here, things that were bought. Of course, this barcode here, it is here. This is what is being scanned. This barcode is what is being scanned. And then when you look at down here, you can see the product is what? The product was raised by, by this cashier or this salesman, and then from which workstation? The machine that was used to raise this order. It also tracks the name of that machine so that whoever was there in that date will be accountable. Okay? So the system takes, it has so many controls whereby it puts your guys, it puts each and every person who is operating the system that they will be accountable in whatever, in different ways or in whatever ways. Okay, so that is how in a wholesale setup, this is where now you do, you do what we call a, a salesmanship. Okay, you do what we call, you raise salesman order in a, in a wholesale. And then we have salesman geolocation. Now this salesman geolocation normally also works hand in hand with an application because we have these applications whereby a salesman can go with the goods in the field and then through a GPRS, if they are in GPRS you are able to, you are able to, if he raises orders uh, outside there, raises order remotely and all that stuff, so those orders will come and, and actually be included here. So when they're included here, then the transaction it will be completed just in the premise and then at the end of it all, you send him the, 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 the receipts or the invoices that they may require. So this is how the salesman can raise orders when they're in the field. And then we have the loading, this loading summary manager. This one also shows you how commodities are actually loaded. It's just simply a summary of the things that were things that were done okay so the date the document number number of cups or those are those are those are stores or cabins and then the route that uh, those vehicles came from so you can see here this is the just the loading summary of what actually has been actually happening with this guy here is the customer and this is the the CAP number of those customers the date and then the weight of the the weight of the amount and then the amount that is supposed to be to be given so this one is given in summary in terms of the driver and boys and and the vehicle so that you can know what exactly is happening with these guys who go to the field okay they are this we have this routes manager is this routes manager whereby you can indicate which route no, normally it requires patience and assistance in creating this so that you have to be very exact in creating these routes, okay? So that when you get the system populates a report, you get the right report over what was indicated in the in the system. And then we have schemes. Now these schemes are just simply marketing tools that helps you to motivate your customers and increase more traffic in your in your in your, in your business. More so, mostly it is being used in supermarkets and uh, and and uh, and wholesales. So you can find like we have scheme A, scheme B, we have also raffles, we have post credit notes, we have scheme C. Now for example in scheme A, you look at in scheme A, any customer whose receipt total qualifies within the following slab, okay, earns the correspondence bonus item. So if they qualify within this correspondence slab, eh, like you can say from this item department, to a certain item department. If they buy within those departments, then the system automatically will assign them a bonus of at least one point. And then at the same time here, yeah, in scheme B, you can look at the scheme B. In scheme B, random receipts that qualify within a group and the corresponding random bonus item. So this random, random, uh, random uh, receipts, okay, the system simply just assigns randomly. So most of the time when you put this 100%, now if you put this 100%, it means you'll go for a loss when you are using this scheme because 
every customer that will be coming to buy okay he's assured 100 percent of getting and the system will assign them 100 percent so that's why when you're running that system this arrow is supposed to be around in the middle there around 47 or 57 or maybe you can put it slightly lower so that uh, the possibility of these guys getting this it's not 100 percent it could be 42 or maybe even 34 percent so that you end up not assigning everybody a specific point and all that stuff so you ensure you set it there so that out of a hundred percent okay only 34 percent of the people that bought maybe may be assigned they may be assigned that those uh, uh those points or even out of a hundred percent of people who come to shop only 19 percent of the people who came to shop the system will choose randomly and it will assign them those points okay and then we have credit notes which are given but mostly they are not actually being used yeah most and then we have all these schemes that uh, you can also be able to use them so that you may increase traffic in your in your in your in your in your shop including even raffles and all that stuff so i've seen for those who've been in bungoma they've seen this big supermarket called ketias most of the decembers they do raffles eh? and then they reward their customers by giving them either a pro box or a, or a, or a motorbike or even a tuk-tuk so customers normally get those things but the system it is system generated and every document it is what the system does there so it is not just human intervention and all that stuff and then we have this live pause now with the live pause this one you are able to see live from the back office you're able to see how tills are actually selling and this is live you monitor real hard cash okay so transactions like mpesa pin pads and pdqs may not actually appear here because those are transactions that are already taken care of online but what you're focusing here is that you're focusing on hard cash that maybe your cashiers may be tempted to put some money aside so these ones the manager will sit there and check and maybe see till one has actually sold up to 10,000 or wherever. So it is due. Then he will send the cashier to go do a bank pickup so that they can do banking to avoid unnecessary temptations from your, from your cashier. So this is life. You are also able to know which till is offline and which tills are, are online. So if there is a till that is selling, but when you come to back office here, you realize it is not showing, then you end up realizing, ah, that cashier is selling offline. So you go check and then you, you put the till back on la online so this is what we call the live pause uh in some other areas we call it mulika muizi now of course here this is a zip dsd and an electronic signature device whereby you can set it at the back office so that it can be able to communicate also with other pos's and then of course here you can check the cash variances of each and every every cashier so every time cashiers get variances you are able to know because once you've done a z report those viruses are indicated in the Z report and they are being stored at the bar at the back office. So you are able to see those viruses that these cashiers were got. And then if it is the company policy that they are supposed to pay back, then they are able to pay back. Once they've paid and the HR or the accountants have confirmed they've paid, then the management will come and, and cancel everything or balance everything here. So they come and indicate everything here. So you can put there too. And then it clears that. So you can see there it is zero zero. So it clears that variance of this, this cashier. So like you can say this cashier has nothing. So that is how you clear the virus. You can follow it by till number or by cashier's name. So you can see if I select cashier's name, it is giving me the admin number because I'm the one who did that. And then if it is till number, you can select it is till number, till number one. It's, just, it's all the same. So this is where you are able to settle all the cash variances that were incurred by the cashier and then here you can view receipts <coughs> here you view the receipts you can view all the receipts that were were actually transacted because once a z report has been done at the pos everything is being pushed back at the back office so here at the back office will have all the transactions and everything that the pos did so this is where you are able to see everything like in terms of receipts, you're able to check those receipts. Like for example here, if I say browse receipts, I'm able to see those receipts. And of course they will have to populate as you're seeing, the way they are populating and all that stuff. 
So as it is populating, you can see. So you can select by date and then say maybe sessions here. You can select that. And uh, let me see if I can backdate. Let's see if I can get. Because uh, in my point of sale, I've not done any Z report. That's why you're not seeing anything here. Okay. But if I had done Z reports, then you'll be able to see. Let me go back and see if at all I can see more. We go to 2019, 2017. Now the, the advantages here is that you can backdate. You can check and play with the dates the way you want. And uh, let me see there. Seems like I've never done any Z report here. So there is no Z. But most of the time, the receipts will appear here. And then you'll be able to select each and every receipt and see the details of those receipts here. So they are always permanently in the system. They are set there. And then here with gift vouchers and also post for God. Now post for God, these are items that customers purchased and they forgot them. So once they forgot them, because they are already sold, they are no longer in our stock. What happens? We come and post them here. We just come here and then take them. Receipt can be scanned. If we left the receipt there too, it can be scanned and then all the products will appear there. And then you say, okay, so you save them here. So that next time when they come, you are able just to pick those products and give them to. But once you've scanned those products and they are here, then the physical products are returned back to the shelf. So if the customer happens to come, you simply come here and confirm the date. Okay, you can confirm the date and check if actually the customer is telling you the truth. Then from there you go and pick those items from the shelf and give it to him so that he goes with it. Because there is no loss there because those items were already sold. So they are no longer in your stock. Okay, so these are the reports. At the end of it all, you find that we have 100 plus reports. Like one of the reports is mostly it checks for the Z, Z reports. Yeah, so you can see here. So once a Z has been done of a particular date, it normally comes and appears at the back office. And this is where it comes. This is where it, it appears. Okay, so we have the Z history and then we have the Z grant summary. So like now, this is the Z history whereby it will show you total float that was given. It will indicate amount, cash, credit cards and all that. It will indicate all those amounts there. So you are able to see all these transactions including even the number of customers that were that were served like uh, we said in the other tutorial while we were showing the pos is that the number of customers is equivalent to the number of receipts that were actually tilled that uh, tender that day so this is an extract of what a z report looks like and of course we've not done i've not seen any z do, done anything so you will not see the amount here let me see if I can backdate and show you some of the amount, some of the Z report that may be here. And if it is not, then maybe we can be seeing that in another day. <coughs> so this is the Z history. Then we have the Z grant summary. So this is the Z. Oh, of course, funny, it's, it's not there. So it seems like I've not done a lot of transactions of late. So this is, and I had upgraded this system just recently. So I know some of the data that I had, I brushed them off. So they were deleted. So that is how it is. But if you do a Z, that is where it will appear. And then we have this Z grant summary of all the Z reports. You can select date from maybe which date to whatever date. Let me use this. Maybe I may get the Z summary. Let me go all the way to 2013. 2014, eh? days May. So let's see the grand summary. So this is the grand summary of the Z report. So this one is from the date for the period of 1st March 2014 to 17th May 2021. So this is the grand summary of the of the entire entire Z reports that were received then. This is how the Z report does the calculation and you can see from there i've only done 131 customers okay because i'm a very busy man kidogo a little bit so most of the time i do a lot of things outside than just focusing on this demo 
demo stuff but this is how the z report will appear and this is how it will look like so for every specific z history or the z report it will indicate okay till numbers to indicate number of tills like now here i only had one till so it will indicate till number one but if it were till numbers it will show you different tills and then with the amount down with the breakdown of all those amount as per the period that those tills that till really worked so it, you can also have vat history vat okay till listing and history summary you can also have cash breakdowns and all that so there are 100 plus reports here so many some of them even you may not actually be able to go through them but at your own time when you're using this system you i advise you you check these reports you can see even we have the itax itax vat sales report thereby you can only you can just do upload it automatically once i say okay then automatically it will generate a csv file for me and then i'll use that csv file to upload it into the itax portal portal you can see your itax csv so it is querying and all that stuff so there is no data but actually it has also it has generated so if i go to my c palm well, if i go here it hasn't it hasn't populated but let me give it time it will populate so that is where the itax is actually generated that okay so that is where it is generated so i will say okay no data was returned so no csv generated so it was not generated because i had no data and maybe i had not even selected anything here okay so that is how you you are able to generate this automatically you don't have to look for all the invoices and start doing calculations and all that so the system does it automatically for you so those are actually the reports in terms of a pos reports that are being generated at the background of the of the of the of the back office okay so we we look at uh, we will look at uh, both the inventory purchase general how they work including factory and loyalty how they work in our next tutorial Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and uh, God bless you. Thank you very much for watching and God bless you and uh, see you in the next tutorial whereby we are going to check on those other modules or sub-modules in, in details. Thank you very much. God bless you.